Hello students. In this video we're going to solve a partial differential equation using separation of variables. Before I do that um, I just want to make clear that separation of variables is one technique for solving certain types of PDEs. Um, it is not the only technique. There are others. There are integral transform methods. Um, there are methods where we can change coordinates. Um, sometimes we can convert a PDE to an ODE or we could take a difficult PDE and convert it to an easier one to solve. Um, there are also numerical methods uh, where we um, find a numerical approximation for the solution to a PDE. Um, there are advantages and disadvantages to all these techniques. Um, some work on some PDEs and will not work on others. Um, there are also other methods not mentioned here, um, several others, um, like perturbation methods, calculus of variation methods, sometimes called variational methods, um, integral equations, and so on and so forth. Um, I'm just highlighting uh, these four. Um, and in this one, in this video, we're going to focus on the first one there, and that's the separation of variables technique. Um, all right, here's an initial boundary value problem. And uh, in a previous video, you might be familiar with the interpretation of this one. I'll just quickly uh, remind you. Um, imagine, uh, well, you have a second derivative term here, and that tells us about concavity. So if it's concave down, then um, that is uh, that uxx is negative, and um, that means utt is negative. Uh, sorry, ut here, that's the derivative with respect to t. Um, that means that that is uh, less than zero, so that implies that uh, u is decreasing. Um, so we expect the solution to decrease, so if it is, um, as the boundary conditions here indicate, if you're at zero here um, for your temperature, then um, we expect this solution to head downward uh, towards zero and the steady state will be the zero solution and uh, we often call that the uh, steady state solution sometimes people little people um, refer to the steady state solution uh, with a u infinity for steady state okay um, all right um, likewise if uh, um, the second derivative is positive, then it's con then the solution's concave up, and here's where the um, here's where the zero is, and then we expect the steady state solution to move to um, u equals zero, but the solution will grow because u of x x is positive, so that means that u of t is uh, u uh, the derivative with respect to t sorry is uh, is positive, so the the solution will increase. All right, now you may be wondering what is this d term? That d is, uh, if this is the heat equation, we refer to that d as the, uh, the heat equation or diffusion equation as the diffusivity. I think I spelled that right, yeah, diffusivity. And um, that tells us, uh, that, that actually governs the rate at which um, the heat either increases or uh, dif dissipates and dif or diffuses. So um, you'll see that um, this will have something to do with um, uh, rate of diffusion. And uh, we'll see that when we take a look at the solution. OK. So uh, what if the boundary conditions are not homogeneous? Um, and uh, we are actually going to delve into this question a little more deeply later, but um, I'll just uh, keep uh, ask you to keep something in mind. We are going to look at sums of solutions, so our linear combinations of solutions, uh, as you might recall from a previous video. So if um, if you had a linear combination of solutions, let's just call them u and v, um, you notice that if you took the derivative, um, the derivative is linear, uh, a linear operator, so you would have u of t plus v of t is equal to d, and then the second derivative is still linear, so you would it would distribute across u and v, and so would the d. And so you would still be able to relate the um, 
the differential the, the differential operators with one another, the U and V. However, you couldn't do that with the um, with the uh, solution um, like you could with zero boundary conditions. So with zero boundary conditions, if you had U, um, you know, U is equal to zero and V was equal to zero at either of the boundaries, then of course um, U plus V would still be equal to zero and it would satisfy the boundary condition. Um, if it was non-homogeneous, like you have a 2 and a 3 here, so you have u is equal to 2 at this boundary and v is equal to 2 at this boundary, then u plus v is not equal to 2 and it would not satisfy the boundary condition. All hope is not lost. We can find a way to solve this um, PDE using separation of variables, um, even if you had non-homogeneous conditions, but um, I'll show you how to do that in another video. Um, for now, we will just stick with the um, easier case uh, where um, these uh, boundary conditions uh, will be zero. So um, before we get started um, with the separation of variables, um, I'll take a break and break that into a second video. We'll call that part two.